Alright guys, got a video here for you today on the AMX crate and in this one we're going to be doing a full reassembly of the rifle. Before we get into that though, there are just two things that I want to mention very very quickly. The first being that we've started selling merchandise, so this is a t-shirt and it's got the little Sub-12 Air Gunners logo embroidered into the fabric there. So if you're interested in a t-shirt, a hoodie or a hat or something like that, check the link in the description and you'll be able to pick one up. They are quite nice bits of kit, I have been wearing the t-shirt and the hoodie for a little while now, but if you're interested, they're in the link in the description below. Now the next thing is that I've gone ahead and replaced all the o-rings on the individual components, all off camera just to save us a little bit of extra time. You can find all of the o-ring sizes online, if you go on the Air Max website, go on to downloads and you can find the actual exploded diagram of the rifle and all the individual o-ring sizes. What I have done though is just make up a little o-ring kit, so in this box here we've got a little bag with all the o-rings individually bagged up and labelled, so if you look at either the exploded diagram, which is this one here, you can see all the o-rings are labelled, and then we've got a little sheet in there which contains the size of the o-rings, the shore of it and a small description. So there that is there, if you're interested in that that's going to be on the eBay store, and again I'll leave a link in the description below. Right then, with that all out of the way, we can finally begin. The first thing we're going to do is reassemble the front block and the regulator. So the first thing we'll do is start off with the one-way valve and the bottle adapter. So this is the one-way valve of the rifle. It's just a small screw with a little O-ring around it. So first thing we'll do is put a small amount of silicon grease around this O-ring on the end there, and then get that installed into the block. So here it is. It goes in the little hole in the base there going to be doing that up with a T10 Torx bit and you don't need to do these up tight what you do is you get them so that the o-ring is touching the base in there but not so it's tight so you feel the screw touch the o-ring then just a bit further and that'll do. Next thing we'll do is install the bottle adapter and we're going to do that by just putting a small amount of silicon grease around this base o-ring here and then getting that screwed into the block. Getting that done up nice and tight then coming back with a small shaft and just getting it snugged up. Next we'll move on to the regulator and the first thing we'll do is take this small o-ring here and stick that in the base just in here. So first thing we'll do, just a small amount of silicon grease around it, drop the o-ring into the base there, make sure it's seated correctly. There are two versions of this o-ring, the earlier blocks used a slightly smaller one and the later ones use a bigger one, but both were included in the kit and my one is the later version which is the bigger o-ring. Once that's in there we'll take this small brass nut and get that installed into the block using a 4mm allen key. Now the trick to this o-ring is to get it done up to the touches, so we're touching the o-ring now. Then we'll put a small amount of squeeze on the o-ring with a brass nut. You don't want to get in there and do it up real tight, but at the same time you don't want it super loose in there. What we'll do now is just quickly screw this shaft into the base of the regulator piston. Not tight for now, just loose. Then we'll use that as a gauge to see if we've got the o-ring done up correctly. And to aid the installation we'll just put a small amount of silicon grease around this shaft here. And then test fit it into the block. The ideal is so that the o-ring is stiff to start but also that the shaft goes in without having to force it in too much. So that's about it there. If this isn't done up correctly what will happen is that you'll get everything built up and then you'll get a leak from this area here as the o-ring isn't sealing on both the block and the stem or the shaft I should say. But I'm quite happy with it there so we're going to leave it as is. We can now unscrew the shaft from the reg piston and stick that down. Next what we'll do is just add a small amount of silicon grease to the piston o-ring, this one here, and also to this little face o-ring here. So there we have it there, the o-rings are nicely greased. Now at this stage I just want to mention something that we've done to the rifle that's made it a little different from the other ones that we'll see. We have given the regulator a little polish up. So both this face here, so the little, hopefully the camera will pick it up, but there is a little chamfer on the hole there. That is one of the ceiling faces for the regulator, as is this little shaft here with the chamfer on it. So that chamfered face seals on this plastic piece here, 
and creates the seal for the regulator. What we've done off camera is clean both of those faces up to a mirror polish so that it works the best it's going to work. With that said, we can get it installed into the regulator. So take this back piece here, put it over the reg piston and then slide the shaft in the middle, getting that done up nice and tight. Let's do these up. What I use is a small Allen key, put that through the hole in the end of the reg piston there, and then take a 10 BA spanner and just nip the shaft up. You don't want to do it up super tight as it is a small shaft and if you go too far you might shear it off, but just tight enough is good. With that done we can restack our Belleville washers and this was the stack that was fitted on my rifle. So if I stack them up nicely there you can see that they're cupped in pairs facing each other. So that there. We'll get that installed on the regulator piston. And there we have it. Next thing we'll do is stick the piston into the regulator housing, like so. This does have an o-ring around it, this one here, which we are going to add a small amount of silicon grease to. For the moment we are leaving the adjuster screw off, so this little grub screw here is the adjuster screw. We'll put this on later. For now though, we can take our regulator, get that put into the body of the rifle, then get it done up nice and tight. And to do that, we're going to be using a 16mm spanner. So this does need to be done up nice and tight as the o-ring that's on the base of the regulator needs to create an effective seal for the regulator to work properly. And if it's not done up tight, you may get some creep. With that done, we'll just take our adjustment screw for the regulator and install that in the top there, just getting it done up nice and loosely by hand for now. We'll adjust the rig pressure when we actually get the rifle built up and pressurised. For now we'll stick this to one side and bring back the back block. And here we have all the components laid out for the back block. Now the observant among you may notice that my pellet probe looks slightly different from your one. So if we take a look at them here, here's the original one and here's one I made up. So the main difference is that my one is slightly longer than the original as you can see there. It's about three or four mil longer and that just helps push the pellet a little further into the barrel. I noticed with the original probe that the pellet wasn't being pushed into the rifling all of the way. So the head was in the rifling and the skirt was not. However with the extended pellet probe that we've made it's now pushed all the way into the rifling. The only other thing that we've got different is that we've got PTFE guides on the hammer, so or the hammer spring I should say. Uh, the hammer spring runs on PTFE guides now, and we've also polished up both ends of the spring. So there you go there, the spring has been polished. And after installing the PTFE guides I did notice a small improvement in consistency. But that's all the differences between a standard block and this one. So first thing we'll do is install the little ball detent in the top here. So we're going to flip the block on its end. Add a small amount of grease into this little ballway here. Add a small amount of grease to the actual ball itself. Drop that in the hole like so. And put this little piece of spring steel over the ball bearing. And then top that off with the small screw. Getting that done up with a 2.5mm Allen key. Next up we'll put the pellet probe in and I have already got the little screw installed in the side. The screw just needs to be just under flush on the back there. So you see that the screw isn't protruding and it's not going to bind up in the block. Before that goes in though we are just going to add a small amount of lithium grease to the outside of the pellet probe just so it slides in the block nicely. We are also going to add a small amount into the pellet probe way in the block. Just a small amount will do us, we don't want it getting everywhere inside the block and the excess will be scraped out by the pellet probe anyway. With that done we can put the little cap on the back, wiping off the grease, then installing the two small screws in the backing plate. Getting those done up with a T10 Torx bit. Next thing we'll do is install the hammer, so we'll take the hammer spring off the hammer, align it within the block like so, get the 
hammer spring guide rod lined up with the cutout and drop that in like that. Next thing we'll do is slide the hammer spring in from the back and also the hammer spring adjuster. Before you do the adjuster in, just make sure that the locking screw for the hammer spring adjuster is out so that you don't mar up the end of the hammer spring adjuster as it goes in. We're just going to leave ours fairly out for now as we will need to adjust the power when the rifle's all put back together. We are going to be leaving the cover plate off for now as we will need to do a little more work to this at a later date. So we'll stick this to one side. The only other thing that I want to mention at this stage is that this is a 177 rifle and the 177s don't come with the anti-double load system. So that's not installed on my rifle. But with that said, we can stick this to one side and get on with some other bits. Next thing we'll do is rebuild the valve housing. So again, my valve looks slightly different from your one. So this one at the top here, or the bottom for you probably, is the original one. And this one here is our one, or the one we made. This one is slightly better suited to sub-12 rifles, as the internals are slightly different. I do have a video on us making this part, so if you're interested in that, have a look on the channel for that. Luckily though, they do fit in exactly the same way, although they do use slightly different O-rings. But you can see all the O-rings on the little sheet in the printout. With that said though, we can get it all built up. So the first thing we'll do is take our valve, stick that through the centre of the valve housing like so, and then install the valve adjuster on the end. I do have another piece in my one. I do did make a small little valve spring guide for the back of the valve, like so. And it just pops on and increases the valve tension slightly. Next thing we'll do is taking a pair of calipers or something similar, set the valve spring tension by measuring the distance from the top of the adjuster here to the base here. Now when you took it apart I did encourage you to measure the valve spring and take a note of the measurement so you can set yours to the original value that you took there. My one however was around 23.5mm so that's what I'm going to set mine to. Next thing we'll do is just add some silicon grease around these two o-rings here, the one at the back and then again for the one at the front. Just a small amount will do us and we also do have another o-ring on the valve adjuster here. So again we'll add a small amount of silicon grease to that as well. On my rifle I did swap the original o-ring out for a slightly thicker one as I did experience a small leak. Next thing we'll do is take our valve and just stick that into the housing. It is a slightly stiff fit so just make sure you push it in nice and carefully. Then we can add the retaining nut over the top. Before we get the nut done up tight we'll just rotate the valve to align the transfer port hole with the top. So like that. Just make sure it's aligned correctly and then get this nut snugged down. There we have it. Next thing we'll do is get the gauge installed in the side of the block. The gauge does have a small o-ring around the base of it, so just get some silicon grease around there before that gets installed. I did modify my gauges slightly so that they are lined up or in the correct orientation. So as you can see there, the gauge is nice and lined up when it's tightened up. On the standard rifle you would have an additional o-ring around this section here, although as I've got my plan and plug, this does away with that o-ring as it seals on the inside of this piece here. But if you take this aluminium piece out, it does have an o-ring on the other side of it, so just be aware of that if you end up taking it apart. What we can do now is bring back the front block and the plenum tube. And in my rifle I've also got the plenum spacer. So first thing I'll do is just put a small amount of silicon grease around these two o-rings here. This is obviously a part that I've made so it's not fitted in the standard rifles. Just get that installed like so. Take our plenum tube, locate the laser engraving that goes to the back and get the plenum tube installed. Next up we'll take our back block, push that in like so and again get that screwed in. At this stage I'll align the plenum tube so that the laser engraving is on the side and that both blocks are in the correct orientation like so. 
Next thing we'll do is get all the cocking mechanism installed into the rifle. First thing we'll do is just add a small amount of lithium grease into this hole here as the cocking rod travels through this hole. So a small amount of lithium grease around that. Next up we'll get the cocking rod fed through that hole there. So nice and carefully like so. And what we'll do next is get the top rail installed onto this rear cocking block. So we just install the screws and do them up using a 3mm Allen key. So they're these screws here. Slightly different from any others on the rifle, so they are unique. And we won't get this screw done up super tight just yet. Next thing we'll do is add a small amount of silicon grease just into this recess here. And this is the area that the O-ring goes for the cocking butter. A small amount of grease will just keep the O-ring in place and stop it from slipping out as we're doing the work. With that done, next thing we'll do is pull back the cocking rod and get the top block mounted onto the top of the rifle. Into position like so. Then we can take the other screw and get that installed in the front. Doing that up nice and tight with a 3mm Allen key. At this stage we can make sure this back block is aligned with the top block and then get that done up nice and tight as well. Next up we'll install the cocking linkage, or the cocking arm I should say, and this can go on either side. You just need to pick a side that you want it on. I always like right-handed cocking, so I'm going to stick it on the right-hand side. Before it goes on, I am just going to add a small amount of lithium grease to this arm here, and also to this back pivot here. You could use molly grease for this application as well. Although this rifle is fairly light on the cocking, so I've always found that lithium grease works just as well. Next thing we'll do is tip up the cocking linkage, or the cocking shuttle, hook the arm in, and then get the back aligned like so. Flip the block back up again, and take our little grub screw with the shaft on it, and get that installed. Before that goes in though, I am just going to again add a small amount of lithium grease to the pin itself. And then we can get that screwed in using a 2.5mm Allen key. The last thing we can do is lay the rifle on its side and just install these two little cover plates, one on either side. And we're going to install them using these small countersunk Torx headed bolts. Getting them done up with a T10 Torx bit. Next up we'll bring back the black block and get that installed onto the rifle. First thing we'll do is take this o-ring here, add a small amount of silicon grease to it and get that installed into the block. Again this o-ring is slightly fatter than the one that you're going to see on your rifle, but my valve is slightly different to accommodate the different size in o-ring. So we'll get that installed on the back there. Feed the cocking rod through the rifle and then get this back block aligned with the side there so that it all slides together nice and easily. If we flip the block over and then nice and carefully push everything into place, we can install the two securing screws in the side. If you're struggling to get it in, what you can do is cock the rifle like so, and that will allow you to push the two blocks together without the hammer trying to separate the two. We're going to be doing these screws up nice and tight using a 2.5mm Allen key. Once we're happy we can safely decock the rifle by pulling the hammer back and then lifting up on this sear here. Once that's done the hammer can be brought forward nice and safely. With that done the next thing we'll do is bring back the barrel and get the two blocks aligned with one another. And to do that we're just simply going to locate the flats on the barrel I'll orientate them upwards and just push the barrel through the rifle. If you have any difficulty pushing through the barrel, you can loosen this bolt off here and reorientate this back block to get everything lined up nice and correctly. If this thing is slightly cocked off to one side, it can be quite difficult to push the barrel through. So just be aware of that as you install the barrel. Next thing we'll do is install the barrel securing screws in the back block. So they just go in this hole here. And 
as you do them up, make sure that you're doing up onto the flats of the barrel rather than the round. Next thing we have to do is make sure that both blocks are aligned with one another and they're not all cocked off to one side. If I'm honest, it's quite hard to get the rifle misaligned when you're doing this as the barrel does keep everything nice and secure, although it's always best practice to do a quick visual check to make sure nothing's become misaligned. But once we're happy, we can take our two grub screws, stick them in these two holes here, getting them done up with a 3mm Allen key. And the grub screws themselves are these ones here. With that done, we can now install the little cocking block for this piece here. So this is the part. As you can see, two pins in the top there with a cutout on one side for a countersunk bolt. We're going to put the two pins in the rod like so. Align the pellet probe so that it lines up with the two holes. And then push that down, getting everything nice and lined up. Once we're happy, we'll take this long countersunk bolt here with the T10 Torx head and get that installed in the back. And there we have it. So whilst we're at this stage here, I will just mention that you can adjust the length of this rod. And the length of this rod does dictate where the pellet probe comes to. So if you were to remove this block and unscrew this rod here, so doing it counterclockwise, that would lengthen the rod and bring the pellet probe back. Inversely, Doing the rod in will also shorten the distance and bring the pellet probe forward. What I've found is that you want sort of a middle or two of gap between this block here and the actual block of the rifle, and that gets you where you need to be pellet probe wise. If you do it too far in, what will happen is that when you close the bolt, it will be real stiff as you'll be pushing this block into the actual block of the rifle. Too far out and you'll cause yourself problems when loading pellets into the barrel. But that's just something to be aware of. At this stage here we can check that the rifle cocks correctly and everything works as it should. We can also decock it by just holding the hammer, pushing up on this sear here and allowing the hammer to fly forward nice and safely. The only other thing that I will mention whilst we're here is that you can add a small amount of grease to your barrel if your pellet probe shuttle feels a little rough when it's running along it. Now my pellet probe shuttle already had a small amount of grease in it before we actually rebuilt the rifle, so I didn't feel the need to add any extra. But if the cocking arm and the pellet probe shuffle feels a little rough as you're cocking the rifle, just add a small amount of grease to the outside of the barrel, and that should improve that slightly. With that said though, we can bring over our cover piece and get that installed on the back. Next up, we can just install the four screws that secure the plate onto the rifle. Again, getting them done up with a T10 Torx bit. Next thing we'll do is get the trigger installed onto the rifle. So this is the trigger unit here. First thing we'll do is take in a nice wide flat bladed screwdriver, separate the linkage at the front here. So there it is, it's all separated, ready to be installed. Then we'll get that hooked into this piece here. So when it's installed, we'll clap it shut and it's ready to be pushed up into place. Next up, we'll take our four securing screws and get them installed, two on either side. Getting those done up nice and tight with a two and a half mil Allen key. Next up, we'll get the safety installed. So this is the safety bar here and it can be installed from either side so you can have the safety on the right or left hand side. I always like to activate the safety with my thumb, so I'm going to have it on the left hand side. So we're going to install the bar in from the right. Before it goes in though, I am just going to add a small amount of lithium grease to the bar itself. Just a small smear will do us, we don't want loads on this. And then get that installed from the right hand side. It does have a series of ball detents on the safety. So before we actually put the safety switch on, we are going to install the little ball and spring which goes in this hole here. So first off, we'll take our little ball bearing like so, add a small amount of lithium grease to it, drop that in this hole here. So that hole there. We can then take our spring 
Now this is a slightly modified spring. This isn't the same one that came on the rifle. The original one was a little flimsy, so I upgraded or made got a longer spring, so that the safety itself is a little more clicky clacky. So we'll stick the spring in the base there, and then take our grub screw and get that in the base, like so. Next we'll rotate the safety bar till we feel it come into contact with the detents. And then we'll take our actual safety latch, this piece here, and get that installed over the bar. So we can adjust the actual screw itself to make the safety stiffer or lighter. So I like a nice tight safety, so I'm going to do mine in a little. And then adjust it so that we can just about unlatch it. And we've got a nice safety there with a nice positive lock and unlock. Next up we'll put the covers on, so this is the cover for the bottom and it just goes over this area here. If you were planning on adjusting your valve, the valve is externally adjustable so you can adjust it under pressure and if you were planning on doing that you could leave this off, but as I've already set mine I'm going to put mine on. And it's held on by a single screw and that just goes in the back using a two and a half mil allen key. With that done, we can flip the rifle over and install the cover for the top here. So that's this piece here, so we're just going to drop that on over the top. And then secure that by using the two screws, one on either side. Getting that done up nice and tight using a T10 Torx bit. With that done, I'm going to flip the rifle over again and just install the cheek piece. And that's done by using these two screws here. Next up I'll put the bottom rail on, so this section here, this is the extended one, although the standard one is a little short thing that comes out to about here. So I'll drop that on top like so. And then this does come with two sizes of the screws, so the longer ones go to the front and the shorter ones go to the back. Again, getting those done up nice and tight with a two and a half mil Allen key. Next up, we can reinstall the bottle. Before that goes on though, we are going to add a small amount of silicon grease to this O-ring here. With the bottle on, the next thing we can install is the gauge here. And like the back one, this gauge here does have an O-ring around the back. And like the rear gauge, I have modified this one so that it's up the right way when the gauge is tight. We're going to be getting that done up nice and tight using an adjustable spanner. With that done, the next thing we can install is the two Picatinny rails that go on the sides of the rifle. These are held in by two screws each, and we need to do them up using a 2.5mm Allen key. Next thing we'll do is get the shroud installed. Now I have a non-standard shroud on my rifle, and I'm not using the original screw-in part for the front of the block there. If you were using that, you could just slide your shroud over and screw it on. Mine, however, fits on a little differently, so we did a video of how we made this. If you just look on the channel, but this is the unit here, so we'll slide that over the barrel. And then push it forward a little, and tighten up the grub screw on the side. Next thing we'll do is bring back the front section, slide that over. Get that installed like so, and get it screwed on. And there we have it, there's the shroud installed. Next up we're going to install the grip, so this is the grip that I use on this rifle, and it's just an ergo chubby grip. So by the use of a 5mm allen key, get that lined up in the bottom, and get the screw done up. Up next is the butt piece, this is the butt piece, it just slides in the back like so, and then we can take our securing screw and get that screwed into the bottom. And there we have it, that's the rifle fully rebuilt and ready to be gassed up. Before we gas it up though there is one thing we need to do and that is make sure that the bleed screw is nice and tight. Right then, so the next thing we'll do is gas the rifle up and make sure that there's no leaks coming from the rifle. 
Right then, and that's the rifle all gassed up and ready to be shot. So the last couple of things we need to do is set the regulator pressure, which is nice and easy. With the rifle gassed up now, we can get that set. So this rifle needs to be set at around 50 bar. That's what it was before I took it apart. And that's what I'm going to set it to now. And to adjust the reg pressure on the rifle, we simply use a 6mm Allen key in this adjustment screw here. The regulator is externally adjustable both up and down, although when you're going down with the regulator, it's always best to sort of do a sort of an eighth of a turn, if not a little less, and then dry fire the rifle to get the regulator to cycle. That's especially important when going down with the reg pressure. Right then guys, so we had the rifle at the range on Saturday and I'm really quite happy with how this little crate has turned out. If we take a look at some of the groups we was able to achieve with this rifle, they are really quite impressive. So both of these sheets of paper here were done at 50 yards and all the groups are five shot groups using a 177 rifle. So if we look at the groups there, some really nice tight groups there. And then the other sheet, same on the other sheet, some really nice tight groups. The actual rifle itself was shot using the magazine and unweighed pellets. So probably if we put the single shot loader in, we'd be able to get even better. And the pellets that this rifle ended up liking were the JSB Express or the Air Arms Express. I would say the Air Arms Express were slightly better overall, although there really wasn't much difference between the two. I would say that the rifle got slightly more accurate when we remade a new shroud for the rifle. The original shroud was affecting point of impact by about 2 inches at 50 yards. So it was obviously holding the barrel off to one side and affecting our accuracy. But with the new shroud on there, that's not a problem. The other thing that I wanted to mention is the efficiency of the rifle. So from a roughly 200 bar fill, we got about 545 shots from a 200 bar fill. Now that's incredibly efficient and really quite impressive. We do obviously have some modified components in it. We do have our new and improved sub-12 valve. and We also do have the transfer port sleeve. But getting over 500 shots from a 200 bar fill is really impressive. But there we have it. A really nice to shoot, impressive little rifle. So, with that all said and done guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.